about lithography. And I've got a picture of this cute little guy because we're really talking about photolithography, which is the method that they use to put small features on computer chips. The word lith means stone. And lithography is really all about transferring a pattern of interest. And they used to uh, use limestone and they would etch whatever they were interested in, a picture or words, into stone, and they would cover the, the part of interest with a waxy layer and the rest of the stone that wasn't involved with water. And because water and oil don't mix, they would stay apart and you could apply an ink that was attracted to the oil part, the waxy part, and then you could lay a piece of paper over the top of the rock, put pressure on top, and pull it off and then your pattern was uh, transferred. So the main types of lithography that we're going to be talking about are photolithography and electron beam lithography. There are many other types as well. I want to start you with a little quote. The invention of photolithography is arguably as important as that of the wheel, bronze, or movable type in terms of its impact on society. It is, however, a technology that is specialized for use in microelectronics. So what is it? So photolithography, the photo part means light, and it involves a chemical called a photoresist. The chemical itself is a photoactive polymer. What that means is it's a long chain that changes when it's exposed to light. It hardens. So the first steps are to coat something, your substrate, like a silicon wafer with the chemical, which is pictured here as pink. Then you put a mask on top. And my mask right here is this blue line. So you can see you have maybe some little openings in the mask where you want light to be able to get through. So there's three little places there. And then you expose it with light. For example, UV light. And the chemical changes where light was able to interact with the photoresist. Then you develop. You can either develop, aka dissolve, the, the positive, which means the parts that were exposed, or the negative, the parts that were not exposed. And that's what we're going to do in class, is we're going to make a negative. Okay? Then you can etch the unprotected areas after removing your mask, or you can deposit a layer of metal. So here, if you apply the chemical, it can etch into that surface of silicon, or you could plate it with a small, thin layer of gold. And then when you um, complete your last step, which is stripping the resist, the pink chemical that's left over, you're left with your final product. So in class, we did this with Play-Doh. I made blue, green, and red Play-Doh in little masks so that we could mock this process and make a little computer chip out of Play-Doh. When it comes to light, there are some setbacks as far as resolution um, because of things like diffraction. So diffraction is the bending of light. So you can imagine if you have a mask that you're placing on top of your photoresist in your substrate, that light can bend around the edges. Light bends through a slit or when it passes uh, an object. And here's a little example showing a Cornell scientist uh, demonstrating photolithography. So you can go back and watch that on my lecture. Okay, Electron beam lithography. This is a little bit different. You focus a beam of electrons and you write your pattern. So you don't have a mask, but you literally write your pattern into your substrate. Now, diffraction is not an issue here because we're working with electrons and not something like UV light. So the wavelength of electrons is much smaller. Scattering is, however, an issue. Electron scattering, um, it can scatter within the resist layer or within the substrate. Electron beam lithography is more expensive and it is way, way slower because again, you are using that electron beam um, and it's basically 
creating such a small pattern and you have to move slowly. So again, I was talking about electrons scattering. Electrons lose energy as they enter a solid. They can have collisions, both elastic and inelastic. This can lead to the broadening of a beam, therefore the sight and the image. Also, depending on the velocity of electrons and the substrate that you're working with and the actual chemical, this can all change how, how much your electrons are scattering as well. So with the scanning electron beam lithography, there's, it's better with a picture, I think that's on the next slide, there's basically an electron gun at the top and you heat this material until electrons start being emitted. You use that electric field to basically extract the electrons from the tip of a very sharp point of tungsten. There's a column that forms the beam and there's a stage at the bottom that moves under the beam, so it moves your sample for you. It's controlled by a computer. Here's a picture. So this is a different substrate. They're using glass and some different photoresist and chemicals that they're etching into the surface, but you can see here that they're making this U shape, or maybe it's a sideways C, and the electron beam writing happens. And then after it's, you have your gold deposited and you lift your photoresist, you're left with this little gold pattern. Soft lithography is different. It's an alternative to photolithography because you don't use it with metals or semiconductors, hence the name soft, that's where it comes from. You can actually use soft lithography to print self-assembled monolayers. It involves a molding of a liquid, kind of like making a stamp. There's two techniques. There's micro contact, contact printing and there's nano imprint. So first let's talk about micro contact. You're literally making a stamp. So you pour a liquid into a mold. And we uh, can do this in class as long as we have the PDMS chemicals. The mold's often made with photolithography, obviously not ours that we're gonna use in class. But then you just ink the stamp, dip it into a solution. The single, uh, the self-assembled monolayer can form on that surface of the stamp. Then you stamp the substrate. So whatever you're using as your quote unquote ink can then be transferred to your substrate. Here's a little picture. I think it's a little easier to understand with this. So they made Using photolithography, they made their mold. Okay, it's basic squares here. They pour on their PDMS. They cure it so it hardens. They peel it away. And now they can stamp different molds with microfluidics here. Uh, in class, we do something to help you understand how this works. You'll, if you just missed this lecture day, you'll probably be there when we make the jello molds. Um, micro contact printing is cool too because you can even roll out patterns since it's soft. Imagine like a rolling pin that has a pattern around it. So as a summary, photolithography is reaching size limits because of diffraction. Soft lithography is relatively new and they are using this technique to fabricate nanostructures and nano devices. Structures. <laughs>